Well, joining us now is Chris Faddis, and he's had quite an experience and getting here yesterday, you had quite an experience, yes, I guess. Yes, yes. Uh, what happened? I'm, I'm curious about that. Uh, let's just say that uh, I got stuck in an airport. Oh, did you really? Maybe outside of the airport. <laughs> maybe maybe I got kicked out of the airport. But <laughs> but point being, I was I I had to go through security again, uh, and the, you know took about thirty five minutes to get through security. So yeah. I ran to the gate, and you managed. And, uh, no, actually, an elderly gentleman beat me to the gate, but we we both were late, so we got on the <laughs> were you both on the next flight. Were you both so running to the gate? He was he, he was he was he was working on it. Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. yeah he was a uh, good good guy. I was I was more of breath than he was. <laughs> I'm glad you made <laughs> so. it. I didn't know it was your anniversary. Yep, no, but I, I got you guys. I just threw this together real quick, and I—I I mean, don't look at the don't look at that side of the bag. How'd you get a Catholic TV? Just day? thank you guys. I, oh, I I'll to put this between ten us. Years of look at that. That's all, all I kinds have. of goodies. All the goodies for you. So. Let me tell you what I'm really happy I'll about. I don't stuff. I don't really believe in regifting, but um, <laughs> thank you. I'm gonna put that right there. Can I tell you this though? You have to know that I'm glad you gave that to us and not to Kevin. Okay, because yeah. and that's gonna hurt his feelings a little bit. Yeah. But we never get anything. He gets everything. I we'll saw, share. I saw his face when you guys were talking about who came up with the name. He's pretty prideful about it. So oh, my I, gosh. I he jumped the, on that, didn't he? I get it, yeah. Think so. of it a second. Yeah. He'll, he'll be talking about this, by the way, in his yeah. time show. Well, tell us why you decided to write the book about your family's experience with your sure. wife's sickness and then ultimately her death. Yeah, you know, before my wife was diagnosed, we had uh, talked about, I had talked about writing a book on trust for a long time and had felt uh, very much like that was something I was supposed to do. Sat down to write it a couple times. Um, in this this title, it is well comes from the song it is well the hymn and and I had you know we had really reflected on that song, um, really powerful story behind the song, and so then when my one of the things we would always say is wouldn't it be wonderful if somebody wrote a book on trust in the middle of a storm mm -hmm. when things weren't going so well it's easy to write it when things are great, mm -hmm. and so as about a year into my wife's diagnosis we started talking about how people were being impacted by her story, how her faith was impacting people and I said you know. Maybe this is God telling us something. We're supposed to write this. So uh, last, about a year ago, we, we prayed about it. We discerned and we decided to write the book. I was going to write it. Angela was going to write Reflections. Um, and as I began writing and working on it, then she got m more ill and we had to stop. Uh, she died in September of last year. So, But she said on her deathbed, you make sure you finish that book. I want people to know mm -hmm. that they must trust in Jesus no matter what. That's so powerful. Yeah. Wow. It was. And Chris, you know, when you were, Making this journey with your wife, uh, and I know it was a very difficult one, and, and continues to be. Uh, social media was very important, and you was able to you were able to use it to help defray some of the costs as well. Isn't it great that we have this kind of worldwide community in which we can share our lives and our struggles? Yeah, it's extremely powerful what what happened through these these you know, 400 people, then 500 people, 1,000 people, 2,000 people as they started to follow the story, started to share the story. And people were praying for us. And even as Angela was, was nearing death and in hospice, she would say, I see all these people. And it, we never, you know, fully came to understand whether that was, you know, angels and saints or, or maybe even people that were praying for her. Mm. But she started to pray for specific people. And I would tell her, hey, this person wrote and said through praying for you, they had this spiritual healing in their life or they had this healing in their life. And she acted as if she knew, as if she saw. And we hear that about the saints as they we near do. death. Yeah. They, they see people who are praying for them and those things. So the power of the social media was almost like this witness of the communion of saints. Like mm -hmm. we could see the body of Christ working. I and never it thought of it Extremely like that. powerful, extremely powerful. Play so mm -hmm. what you say about the powerful prayer community that we have right. here at Catholic TV. Oh, no, thing. I absolutely think that. You know, when but when we do pray, Chris, a lot of times we're, we're praying, well, please make her better, please. And it, mm -hmm. and it doesn't always happen and in your case um, your wife didn't get better and yet both of you and especially it just touches me so much when you trust in Jesus uh, you guys was, are still and continue to be faith filled mm -hmm. how, how do we do that how during these difficult times do we stay faith filled I think the the thing that's so hard is that we love this life so much mm -hmm. you know and it's not yeah. bad to love this life I mean uh, I love I love my wife. I love being married. I loved everything about it. I loved our children. She loved our children. She wanted to see so many things in life, and she had to let that go. But in the end, her ultimate faith was in heaven. Mm -hmm. She wanted to trust in Jesus completely. It was always hard for her, and she said during this, she said, now that it's hardest, I can actually trust him more than I ever could before mm -hmm. because she had to rely on his grace. And in the end, she, um, you know, she was able to just focus on Ultimately, I wanted to be in heaven, and my desire was to lead her to heaven as her husband. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that was the goal. Um, so in the end, you know, it's it's difficult. But as my daughter said, "Mommy's in heaven, so I don't want to be sad." Mm. She's yeah. in heaven. You know, 
listening to what your wife said and everything she said, a lot of times when someone is, is that, that ill, uh, we all join together and we help out. It sounds like she was giving so much strength to other people yeah. through her witness of her faith during yeah. that time. Yeah, that ended up being the story. You know, as she got closer and closer, we started getting these letters and emails saying, you know, just so you know, through, through my sister praying for your wife, she went back to church. Through this happening, my marriage has been healed. And that continues as I go out and share her story. And that's why I'm doing it. You know, three months into this, I <laughs> sat down and prayed. And I said, God, if you want me to share this, I, I guess I will. But I'm working on the book. But if I'm supposed to speak and all that. And the next day, I got a call asking me to come to Boston, actually. Mm -hmm. And the calls started coming in, people saying, can you please share your story? And every time I go, it's a different impact. So one parish might be that there's a ton of families that are struggling in their marriage and the marriage elements of this story, you know. And then another parish. I'm in a parish in Michigan, and it turns out this is the hotbed of cancer. So these people just flock to this parish because every single one of them has been affected hmm. bit profoundly. So as the story has been shared and as people have prayed for her and for our family, what's happening is God's using it to heal them. And, and what, as much as I miss my wife, and as much as we're sad, what greater get grace to have purpose in your suffering? Oh, for you know? sure. There's that line, suffering is redemptive, and a mm -hmm. lot of people don't get that. Yeah. But it really is true. Suffering can change us, it can save us, and it can make us better people, holier people. Amen. And I didn't get that before. Yeah. This story taught us that now in a really profound way. Now I get it. <laughs> yeah. how, how many children do you have? We have two. We have mm -hmm. two. Our daughter uh, just turned six, actually, a week ago. Um, and her name's Gianna, and our son turned three the day after Angela died. So he's three and a half. Well, you're all in our prayers. Thank you. And we're, we're going to put you in our prayer box, too, yes, just so you know. Yes, thank you. Where can people find out more about the they book? Can, the book will be out next month. Um, it's So itiswellbook.com. Itiswellbook.com. And there may or may not be a little Catholic TV special on there right now if you pre-order. A couple little specials Ooh. I put up. So, so if you pre-order the book, it'll come to you as soon as it's out. Tenth uh, anniversary benefit. Hey, why not? And you know what? I, tell Bonnie, gift. I'd like to give, can I give away something on one of these Fridays? Just absolutely. Yeah, can I do that? Can I be one of the, I'll, I would love to, so write in and we'll. Good, you'll be one of our book. Friday gifts. Yeah, it, I, I might want that bag back, but I want something <laughs> out of that. But we'll talk about that. Thank you. Chris, thanks so much.